Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome back to Advance Wars 2 Hard Campaign. We're getting into the Green Earth missions next, and would you look at this? There is a mission in Green Earth with 9 stars of difficulty. How do you like that? Nature Walk had 8 stars, and it was really easy, so a mission with 9 stars is actually very, very difficult, and I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play the other two. Which is unfortunate, because this is the map where you can find the map to the lab for Green Earth. So, skipping it means we skip on that, but I wasn't getting Neotanks either way, right? So these two missions, uh, these three missions actually got me really interested in how they determined how many difficulty stars each mission should get. Because prior to seeing Nature Walk's eight stars, like, I didn't really pay attention, but there are some really weird, like, level stars here. Because this mission has seven stars, it's really easy. This mission has only five stars, it's really difficult. So these are the two I'm going to play, starting with the Drake map, which means Navy units. Luckily, this map is really, really easy to clear in spite of seven stars. In fact, it's completely trivialized, which is even more hilarious considering what the map actually looks like. So we'll get to that eventually. And it seems we'll be destroying black cannons, which the enemy has not yet realized cannot actually destroy any units because it always leaves them at one health. Now that's got to be painful for the unit to constantly get fired upon with only one health remaining. Anyways, the mission is called Drake's Dilemma, which is pretty accurate. It makes me interested in what the map name was over in Japan, because in Japan, Drake is named Mop. Very weird name. But it does remind me of this actually really old Advanced Wars 2 hack that featured a remake of this map called Mop's Melody. Uh, anyways, getting into the mission at hand, so it's a Fog of War map, which means we can finally use reefs to hide our units. That's, that's the one different kind of sea terrain, so we're finally going to make use of it. Maybe we have made use of it before, but hey, we've got reinforcements from Yellow Comet, led by Kanbei himself. Isn't that good? Alright, maybe this will be a fun mission after all. <laughs> it kind of isn't. Uh, the objective is to destroy the two black cannons. Aha, uh -huh, we can mop up the rest of the enemy, because he's called Mop in Japan. I'm just I'm just making like really bad jokes at this point. Alright. So the missions start. Yes, here we go. So this is all Kanbei's assistance amounts to. Just these two bases. And like 5k income every turn. Until you start capturing at any rate. But see, uh, Canby is actually completely useless here. In fact, it's more beneficial to just not destroy anything at all. Because the objective is to destroy the Black Cannons. They're on the left side of the map. Canby is never going to get over there. I suppose he could put a rocket in this area right here and shoot at this first Black Cannon. But you still have the other one, which basically... Like the, like, the way I've always played this mission is that I'm going to take these battleships, because we have a lot of pre-deployed battleships. In fact, I could do this with just one battleship. But we're going to basically leapfrog the battleships from reef tile to reef tile until they reach this area around here. And then they can just shoot at the black cannons. And then, you know, that's going to earn me only 200 points, because, um, like, I haven't, I didn't actually destroy any actual enemy units. But, like, does it matter? I mean, like, I don't know what my campaign average is like, but still. Like, it's not like the game keeps track. It it does keep track of your scores, but it never actually displays, like, the um, total number of points. Like, um, on the mission select screen, it will display the most recent rank you've got on that mission, which is nice. But it never displays your actual score, so you never know if it's a 300-point S rank or a 200 and, uh, 79 point S rank. Actually, I think 279 would be an A. I don't even know why I'm moving these guys around. I just, I guess I want to show where the enemy units are. So yeah, there's a base near Drake's HQ as well. I don't know why. It's not going to do anything, and Canbay isn't going to do anything either. I don't know if him destroying units increases your power score, but, you know, the enemy's never going to find me in these reefs. So I just have to get into, I just have to get a battleship into position and it's basically over. I don't think Drake reduces the cost of uh, fuel for sea units, because 
Eagle does that for air units. I don't think Drake does for sea units. So yes, we have to wait for Hawk to take his turn. Oh, by the way, did I mention uh, this is our first actual battle against Hawk? Uh, ever since that one map with Andy and Hawk, I guess. That was a long time ago. Right. So, yeah, I suppose I could save a couple turns if I um, put my sub here, see if there's a way to move in without being attacked by the rockets, and it doesn't look like there is. I'm going to be in range of them no matter what. Right. So I should, um... It occurs to me that I should be putting a dive sub on the port, because that technically uh, means you never lose. Like, um... I don't even know why those airport, why that airport and silos are there. I guess if you wanted to take the lander all the way down here and pick up an infantry, like that would just take so long. Anyhow, I should not be dilly dallying. Missile silos. There's, uh, I guess there's missile silos in Yellow Comet's area. Well, you know, I don't know what to say to that. I, I don't think the missile silos are their uh, primary problem here. Like, if they get to a silo, I suppose that would be annoying, but they cannot see any of the battleships. Well, there's actually going to be one turn where they can see the battleship because they have to move through that tight little corridor and there's no reef to hide in. But the rockets will be long gone by the time I get there. In fact, I, I could, since I'm using the sub as a scout anyways, just to show people where all the enemy units are, I guess I could send it out, and um, I could send them out. Might as well have all of them on board. Um, the rockets got all of those tiles covered, so I just barely can't get out of range. I have to use the reef to hide again. Actually, I could situate the other one here. Don't ask me, uh, what purpose two battleships down there would serve. You really only need one. Like, if you are sitting on that... Like, if you are sitting on the column of C on the right of the first cannon there, you don't have enough range to actually get to the second cannon. You have to go all the way around. So I'm sure if you wanted to get 300 points on this, you would have to actually destroy enemy units, and I just don't see the point. That would take even longer. Like, these enemy phases are already so long. We're eight minutes in, and we've just been watching Hawk, like, do whatever. He doesn't even have anything to fire at. Alright, so there's no longer any rockets nearby. There's one in the woods here somewhere. So you do actually want to watch for that. Maybe it's right here? Yeah, it is right there. So we're perfectly safe. And you know, Kanbei is just... He's being super helpful right now. I suppose if something does threaten Yellow Comet's HQ. Because I... Oh, uh... I guess they did manage to get a silo, and they attacked their own unit with the silo. What is the AI doing? The AI's targeting with silos makes no sense. It's very easy to avoid, like... Like, it's so easy to avoid not attacking your own unit there. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. But yes, you have, in fact, seen that they... I guess they can get to one of your units after all. I've never actually had that happen. Actually, I should have revealed... Like, all of my other units are hiding, so that's why they went for those two battleships in particular. Man. Oh yeah, battlesh... Uh, the submarine is almost out of fuel, so I guess building an APC wouldn't be a bad idea. Gosh, that did... That did cause a lot of damage to the battleship's ability to shoot things. Right, I, I, um, I guess an APC is in order after all. It's probably going to be necessary to refuel that sub. And I should be watching my other subs for how much fuel they've got left as well. All 
Alright, just waiting for Hawk to end his turn. I hope the other map doesn't take this long. Like, it's... Like, the other map that I'm going to play is basically over in, like, five or six turns, but those turns could take a while. Really strange map, too, if you think about it. Oh, is that artillery able to fire that cruiser? No, it's hidden. So yeah, good thing the reefs hide sea units, or else I would be here for a while. Alright, here goes the first cannon. And as stated, we are just shy of being able to attack it. Attack the other one, I mean. So, we have to go and go down here. That's just barely out of rocket range. I've got no idea if they've got another rocket, so I, I, I presume I should just, like, check it out for myself. I don't think there's another rocket there. Like, that would be very odd if there was. But yeah, that one silo is basically the only one they've managed to fire so far. Oh, there's another one. So it looks like we're joining those two battleships. Well, like, eventually, I suppose. I suppose my playing has caused this to take a little bit longer than it should have, but no matter. You know, I just don't get the purpose of Yellow Comet in this map, because even if Canvey is meant to increase your power score by destroying enemy units and preventing them from getting at the silo, I don't think Canvey's, uh, like, destroyed units count for power anyways, because only the first team should count. Like, I never really put effort into figuring that one out. Alright. Let's go ahead and... What do we do now? If we go into... Let's see, how close do we have to be? Like, I'm, I'm fairly certain there's just nothing in there. So, um... I think I'll just join on this turn. And we can worry about what comes next later. Yep, gotta wait for Hawk to move all of his units again. Like, maybe it's not such a good idea to take the easy way out if it's going to be this boring. But Jess's map is very, very difficult, especially on hard mode. And Eagle's map is also hard, but it's short, so that's why I'm taking that one. I don't want to be here all day. I know you don't want to be here all day. At least, I think you don't want to be here all day. I'm starting to think I should cut out some of these enemy phases. But only like three more turns max, I think. Is that rocket still there? I want to make sure I don't get hit by it. I don't know I don't know what's out there. So let's uh let's scout it out. Oh, you can't really see anything because of all the wood tiles, I suppose. Um I think if I'm sitting here. I think if I'm sitting here, then I should just barely be able to hit it, yeah. So you have to come out of the reefs in order to, to attack that black cannon as well. So just two more turns. I have to fire at it two times. And oop, that sub's almost out of am uh, fuel. <laughs> They're all almost out of fuel. I should really be refueling them. I don't know why I keep them dived anyways. So far, so good. He's not firing. You know, I like how you can kind of use the camera movement to get an idea of where each unit is, even if they're hidden, along with the sound effect that plays whenever they move. Yeah, you know, it's just a nice little detail. Alright, let's make sure these guys don't lose all their fuel. I think they'll be fine. One more turn is all we need. I'm surprised. Like, I'm still so very surprised that that silo that the enemy fired actually hit their own unit. 
It's almost as if their own unit was hidden by the fog of war as far as the silo goes. Wow, that would be a really weird oversight if it turned out to be true. We haven't cracked all the codes to Advance Wars 2, but I have cracked some interesting codes to Advance Wars 2. Like how there's... Like, um, I just found this out today. There's actually bits set aside in memory for unlocking the generic soldiers as commanding officers. But, like, they're not listed in the list of COs you can select for each map. So... <laughs> Look at this. Did you notice this? I just noticed this. Do you see this? <laughs> oh my goodness. How did they make that mistake? Alright, let's get out of this map before I lose my mind. I like this line too. The black cannons were destroyed. Useless hunks of... What? Junk? Why did you stop? Finish that thought, Hawk. Oh, and this is hilarious, too. You have our gratitude for the reinforcements. He didn't build anything! Drake, he didn't build anything! You didn't build anything! Uh, Alright, I'll stop. Alright, so Yellow Comet was in that mission for absolutely no reason. I don't really know why. Well, that was a good 16 minutes. All for 200 points. Yeah, that was some real rough sailing. We <laughs> almost got uh, less than 200 points. Yes. All right, so on to the second map. Well, I have to admit, this mission is way too difficult for only having five stars. I've already failed it one time. This is the infamous Sea Fortress. And, um, it's a really, really difficult map, but it's also very short. So I've decided to take this one on instead of the other one. Oh boy. Well, at least it, um, at least it's fun if you like playing as Eagle and doing a bunch of damage in a single turn. Because Lightning Strike is still very, very powerful. But listen to this dialogue, though, because this is, um, interesting. They're all air units? Nothing but air units, sir. Nothing but air units. Well, um, I got news for you, Hawk. It's not nothing but air units, actually. Because for some reason, on hard mode exclusively, Eagle decides to bring battleships and cruisers into this map. Yeah, this is sort of a gimmickish map, and uh, you probably are wondering what's up with the map, because if you haven't played this on hard mode, you don't know that they actually change the orientation of the map in hard mode. Like, um, in normal mode, it's a left-to-right map. It's all horizontal. But in, um... But in hard mode, it's a top-to-bottom map. You come from the bottom and attack the fortress on top. So yes, the gimmick of this map is that you have nothing but air units, and if you have to take down all of those mini-cannons. With all of this very impressive anti-air defense all around it. So yeah, this is going to be difficult. This formation is actually set up very well. The missiles are all covering each other. There's a bunch of anti-airs everywhere. It's just really difficult to actually um, like destroy those mini cannons without taking a lot of damage yourself. This is practically a suicide mission, if I may be blunt. Yes, but Eagle decides to, with a with a bit of um, encouragement from his soldiers, he decides to press the attack as hard as possible with only this force right here. So, let's get started. This first turn is honestly nothing but moving your units forward, which is really annoying. I wish they had... I should be using the L button, actually. Because if you press the L button, it actually lets you select the next unit immediately without having to move the cursor, which is really nice. Like, I haven't been using that very often in either of the two playthroughs I've done. But this is nice. Oh, and, um, I should really be putting my B-copters into the cruisers. Because that's still a thing you can do. They never took that away in any of the Advanced Wars games. The only real reason I'm using it, to be honest, is that if you transport your B-copters this way, then they don't spend any fuel as they move. Like, they still move just a little bit farther than they would have if they had moved normally, except they didn't spend any fuel. That's interesting. 
Like, fuel isn't really a problem in this map, but, you know, it's, it's yet another small detail that's worth paying attention to. Like, who knows if it could be useful in the future? It might be. But I really wish they'd started the player closer, because this first turn is just nothing but moving forward. Very annoying. And you don't even have to worry about moving into the fighter's range, because that one only moved a single space forward. That's never happened before. I've never had, had that happen in this version of Sea Fortress. Well, yet another weird AI inconsistency. So yes, Hawk decided to deploy subs, even though he said the enemy force had nothing but air units. Very interesting. I have no idea why Eagle would bring in cruisers. I guess they're good against the enemy air units. So problem number one I have with this map is that basically Hawk is guaranteed a pair of Super CO powers. And I haven't mentioned what Hawk's powers are yet. They are both mass damage powers, which is uh, going to be very annoying because there's no way to repair any units whatsoever in this map. You have to join them if you want to repair them. Very, very annoying. probably going to lose one of my units to the fighters because for some reason the enemy fighter decided to just sit still instead of actually move forward as far as it could like the other one did. A surprisingly smart fighter. So I, at this point it's safe to say that I have already done enough damage to cause Hawk to get his super. There's really no way of avoiding it. Like if there's a way to avoid it please tell me it would make future playthroughs much easier. Right, so we'll keep the bombers in here. As you can imagine, the bombers are for destroying the cannons. And one thing that can be said about this map is that if Hawk is guaranteed a Super CO power, then so is Eagle. And that's good because Lightning Strike is really, really awesome. So here comes the first Super. Black Storm, two damage to all enemy units, two points of healing to all of his units. Actually, I think I have talked about this back in the... Like, the first map we encountered Hawk was actually the Hawk versus Andy battle. Way, way back in the beginning. Alright, so I've lost one unit so far. That's fine. Subs incoming. Gotta watch for those. And we also want to bait out those cruisers as well. Because they're powerful if they get the first attack, but if, uh, if you attack them first then you're basically pretty much fine. Like, they have very weak defenses. So I'm going to use fighters to lure them in. And that might look a little bit weird, but they can't one-shot fighters by any means. So this should be all right. A little bit risky using the 7 HP fighter to do it, though. This cruiser can finish off the fighter. I guess bringing those cruisers was a good idea after all, but if, if, he, if he can afford two cruisers, he can avoid two fighters, and those probably would have been more helpful. I've also got to be wary of the enemy sub, so I will surround the battleships with my copters and cruisers. Yes, this is the ideal way to handle it, I think. And the bombers, uh, let's just make sure they're not in range of the enemy cruiser here. Also want to make sure that they don't wander into the cannon's range as well, so that tile is the safety zone. Now the biggest worry is going to be actually attacking those cannons. By Golly, are they heavily defended. Right, with that out of the way, obviously we're going to use Lightning Strike to deal with the cannons. I think I'm going to try, like, something I haven't tried yet is using the bombers to uh, eliminate the cannons before using Lightning Strike. Now then, we've got some more enemy units to deal with, and, um... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to first get rid of these cruisers. And in order to... Like, I actually don't want to destroy those subs. Because 
not only is it very easy to just neutralize them another way than besides destroying them, like, uh, I also don't want to fill Hawk's power meter by destroying them, because 20,000 per sub destroyed. Is it 20,000? Yeah, yeah, it is 20,000, I think. So, instead of just outright destroying them, let's uh, surround them with air units, because everybody knows that a sub cannot and will not just simply swim under enemy air units, right? Look at this, this is so hilarious. Don't fire at them, I don't want to fire at them. That'll fill his power meter. Now, the sub can attack cruisers, but I don't think it will. It would take way too much counterattack damage. Right. Uh, that, that copter's gonna get hit by the mini cannon. No real way to avoid it. So, let's see here. What? Oh, what do I do? Also, I have no idea what's up with the Neo tanks. I, I should have pointed that out earlier. I've got no idea what's up with them. So I think what we're going to, what I'm going to do is, I'm, I realize that this will cause me to take some damage from the mini cannon fire, but I want to get as close as possible before using my super. And I want to do some preliminary damage to those cannons, because other than actually getting shot by the mini cannon itself, um, you can um, attack these cannons and be safe from the anti-air units, so I'll have a couple of 5 HP bombers, but that's really alright, in my opinion. Because they they could just uh, finish off those two cannons anyways. The question is, did I just give Hawk his CO power? Oh yeah, I'm going to end up with 4 bombers at 5 HP. That's fine, this is actually really, really good. And Hawk has not gotten his second super yet. Which means I could potentially end this right now if, if I make a very good move with Lightning Strike. The very annoying thing about this is that even under Lightning Strike, an 8 HP Bomber can't destroy the Mini Cannons in one hit. It is one point of damage off from being able to do that, and that's really annoying. Alright, so... Um, and another thing is... Also, you, also, a thing to keep in mind about Cruisers is that if you... Um, if you load B-copters in the cruisers and then drop them, Lightning Strike can still refresh them. Like, I, I, I'd imagine that's not very useful at all, but still. Alright, so I really want to think this through. I, I'm taking a while to think just because I want to um, not screw this up. So I'm going to use uh, these two bombers to come around and hit the side cannons first. And uh, it's only got 12 HP left, so I think a B-copter could actually finish it off. Yeah. Let's do it with those instead. I've been talking a lot throughout this mission. Alright, so I think this is the way to do it, actually. I, I like this. I like how this strategy is panning out a lot more than the one I tried previously. It should be obvious that I'm going to be using Lightning Strike on this turn. We need to get the... We actually need to get that Neo, the Neo Tanks out of the way here. Because otherwise, I'll only be able to attack the mini cannons once. And as I've said, you need two you need two hits to destroy them. Or I could have just um, could have just gone like this with these two five HP bombers. But I've um, I guess I've goofed and uh, used the wrong used the wrong bomber on the cannon. So whatever, we're gonna need that anyways. But it's okay because I like how this is panning out so far. Let's go ahead and move these copters up as well. I'm just going to use the cruiser to block off the sub. And even the battleship can actually be useful because it can fire at the cannons without having to worry about the anti-air units. So maybe bringing those battleships was a good idea after all. So here we go, lightning strike. Alright. And if I do manage to finish the map this turn, then Hawk's not going to get a CO power at a second CO power at all. I said he was guaranteed two supers, but maybe that won't happen. Uh, yeah, I'm not risking it. Like if I get lucky, it's possible to destroy that Neo tank with the um, how many HP does this thing have? Eight HP. If you get lucky, you can destroy the Neo tank in that position with that bomber. Or B copter rather, but it's very, very much up to chance. 
All right, so this should be enough to sneak in and hit the cannon in the back. Just barely. So that was a good, um, that was a good strategy. And it looks like we've got this, actually. We really do have this. Yeah. So that's the strategy you want to use. Um, let's destroy units for power before finishing up. Like, I could at least get a 300 on Sea Fortress. That would be very, very nice. I suppose one thing you could say about Sea Fortress is that you basically do it the same way every time. And as I said, cannons left with one health. So, uh, destroy, and hopefully destroy. Oh, I got lucky. I guess I would have gotten lucky with the other unit. Two units or so should honestly be enough. And we've actually minimized the casualties, too. I guess I am a pro player, after all. I'm pro at Sea Fortress at any rate. That was a big brain strategy, letting the cannons hit me like that and reducing me down to 5 HP. Because it's still enough, 5 HP, to drop the cannons in two hits. With Eagle, at least. Yes, yeah, so we've got a long and hard road ahead of us. I don't know what I'm going to do about the next set of maps. But I'm sure we'll be able to get through it. Perfect 300 on Sea Fortress. I conquered an infamous map. That's always nice to do. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. Next time we take on the next set of Green Earth missions. Only five turns. Wow. That was a short map. Gonna be an interesting set, I think, because these are some very interesting missions, but uh, we'll see how it pans out. Later, everybody.